Bill Goodwin. Our singer, Jimmy Cash. And the Swan Quartet singing Gay Ranchero. A Gay Ranchero, a Caballero, can always find someone to pet. A Senorita, a Sweet Pepita, her other loves will soon forget. If he's insistent, and she's not distant. The senorita will confess Her gay ranchero, her caballero Need only ask and she'll say yes And on his rancho, we now find Pancho With his pepita by his side She thinks he's handsome, worth any ransom To him she's still a blushing bride Our gay ranchero, our caballero Still tells the world of how they met having a talk with Martha, the new cook. I hope you'll like it here with Martha. George, that's my husband. He's very easy to please, and he says I'm very simple, too. I know I'll like it here, ma'am. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good girl. How old are you, Martha? Uh, just 17, ma'am. <laughs> My, oh, that's young. But, of course, when I was 17, I wasn't any older than you are. Well, I sure hope I'll give satisfaction then. You know, I ain't a very fancy cook. No, you're not. But I always say it's more important to have an honest face. Oh, everybody says my stare if they're good. Well, that's nice. And it's important to be healthy, too. Oh, and by the way... Oh, I'll answer it, Martha. Hello? Who? Yes. You sound just like my sister Bessie. Oh, you are my sister Bessie. Ah, well, now guess who this is. <laughs> no. No. Uh-uh. No. No. Give up? Well, this is Gracie. How's Mama? Well, that's good. And Papa? You don't care to discuss Papa? You mad at him? What happens every time you bring a new fellow to the house? Oh. Papa gives him permission to marry you before the boy gets his hat off? <laughs> oh, well, that's Papa. You remember the first time George came to dinner at our house? Papa said to him, Mr. Burns, do you intend to remain single or would you like another piece of roast beef? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> And George was so hungry, we announced our engagement immediately. <laughs> what? Well, I know, Bessie, but you can't be so choosy. You'll be 26 for only a few more years. <laughs> Honestly, Papa gave you three presents for Christmas. What were they? Oh, a hope chest, a bridal veil, and a bear trap. Oh, uh, well, wear them in good health, Bessie. Oh, and thanks for calling. Goodbye. And um, Mrs. Burns, this is my first day as your cook, and I'd like to know if Mr. Burns likes lots of seasoning in his food. Oh, by all means, Martha. So when you wash the vegetables, be sure to use plenty of bath salt. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, now you go right ahead with your work, Martha. I'm going in to see if Herman is through with his lunch. Here, I 
told George to oil that kitchen door. Hello, Herman. <coughs> oh, are you all finished with your lunch, Herman? <coughs> that's, that's good. Why, Herman Burns. You didn't. <laughs> is good for you, Herman. I only give it to you because you must have iron in your system. <laughs> no, I mean iron that gives you strength. Not iron like in buckshot. Spinach oh. <laughs> is what builds muscles, Herman. Have you ever seen Daddy George's muscles? <laughs> <laughs> since the gay 90s? It's uh, eight ways better than old-style floating soaps? Then what do you say, Jimmy? Well, I say that... Swan gives loads of rich, thick, creamy suds. <laughs> why, Swan suds twice as fast, even in the hardest water. That's why Swan is great for washing the dishes and why it's swell for washing hankies and hose and lingerie. Is that what you say, Jimmy? Yes, sir. My, my, what a salesman. Jimmy, I never knew you had it in you. Me neither. <laughs> And then for a grand finish, Jimmy says, Swan comes in a green wrapper with a white swan on the front. <gasps> no, I what is a well, we better run along now, Gracie. We're on our way to the post office. Oh, that reminds me. I've got to mail this package, too. See, that's a beautiful package, all wrapped in pink cellophane with a big blue bow. What's in it? Two dozen rocks. <laughs> rock? Yes, for a friend of mine who has a rock dog. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a nice inexpensive gift. Yeah, I found them in my backyard, but you'll never know it. I pasted a Saxon Avenue label on every rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Herman, all you've been doing is playing with that spinach. Don't you like it? <laughs> now you eat it. It's good for you. It'll put feathers on your chest. <laughs> Oh, maybe I'll put too much sugar in it. Let me see if I can find some lemon. Oh, here's something in this bottle that says lemon mint. Rubbing lemon mint. Oh. <laughs> now, there you are. I poured it all in. Now try it, Herman. <laughs> You're a very, very naughty boy, and you fly right up to your room and stay there. I don't care if I did hurt his feelings. Oh, dear, now it's the door. Mother's Day is never done. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, hello. What a game of golf. Did you beat USC again? Yeah, three weeks in a row. <laughs> Boy, I'm starved. We have a new cook, George. She's just 17 years old, and her name is Martha, and she comes from Nebraska, and she's five feet three, and she likes Ronald Coleman pictures. She cooked. Oh, darn it. I knew there was something I forgot to ask you. 
Well, it doesn't matter as long as she knows what kind of movie she likes. Gracie, isn't there something to eat? Yeah, but it'll spoil your dinner. And besides, we have to go to the post office to mail this package. Well, I can't wait for dinner. I'm going to eat this spinach. Oh, oh, what's in the spinach? It's simply awful. Oh, George Burns, you're just like your son Herman. You go right up My to your son room. Herman? Gracie, I told you about <laughs> Jimmy Cash singing My Foolish Heart and I. We're in love with you, my foolish heart and I. What a pair we two, my foolish heart and I. I say to my heart, you are not so smart to love one who doesn't love you. And my heart replies, I know it's not wise, but if I'm a fool, look at you. And I must confess, my foolish heart is right. When you won't say yes, why do we pray? My foolish heart and I Well, maybe someday we'll hear you say Darling, let's give love a try Oh, till then we'll pray My foolish Pick up George, Gracie, and the package at the post office. And if parcel post is 12 cents a pound, George has got a fortune on his hands. Gracie, Gracie, both my arms are going to sleep. Honestly, this package feels like it has rocks in it. I wish this line would move a little faster. George Burns, don't you dare criticize the post office. Why, I honestly believe that if it wasn't for the post office, we wouldn't get half of our mail. <laughs> Gracie, I'm not complaining about the post office. Well, you better not. Look up there in that wall. See what it says? Neither rain nor snow nor sleep nor gloom of night shall save these couriers from the completion of their appointed round. That's the motto of the California post office. That's the motto of all post offices. Y- you mean they have that kind of weather in other places, too? <laughs> Well, let's forget it. The post office is, is a wonderful place, but this package weighs a ton, and there are still eight people ahead of me in this line. Oh, look, that window over there is opening up. Hurry, George. We'll be the first in line. Come on, George. Who's first? I am. I'd like to mail this package. Oh, this window's for money orders. Next. I'd like to get a money oh, order. Oh, fine. i better get back to that line again. Uh, pardon me, miss. Wasn't I standing in this line? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Uh, right in front of you? I wouldn't be surprised. Then I'll, I'll, I'll get back there. <laughs> that would surprise me. <laughs> but look, You Liz. can't talk to my husband that way. If you have anything to say to my husband, tell it to me and I'll tell it to him. Well, tell him to get to the end of the line. George, get to the end of the line. <laughs> I was standing right here. Get back there. Get back there. Who do you think you are? You get a problem, sir. You think I'm back in line? Well, I guess they want me to get back to the end of the line. Well, come on, Gracie. Come oh, on. Well, don't worry, George. After I tell the superintendent what happens, he'll put that woman in her place. Then you can stand in front of her. Well, thanks. Oh, look out, George. You get hit by that mail truck. That isn't a mail truck. Oh, no. Oh, hello, Paul. Hello, kid. Well, kids, how's it 
I'd like to have some of these potato chips. Always carrying food. Paul, you don't happen to have a tuna fish on white. Oh, don't be silly, George. I don't carry everything with me. You'll have to take it on ride. <laughs> okay, put a little mayonnaise on it if you're wearing your vest. I'll see you later. I'm going over to buy $20 worth of stamps. Well, here I am at the end of this line with this package is weighing me down. It's breaking my back. Oh, I'm going to find the superintendent. I'll get you out of this line in two minutes if I have to talk to him all day. Gracie, come back here. Come back nothing. I'm going. Goodbye. Oh, oh pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. I knocked your bundle down. Oh, that's all right. I guess I shouldn't be in the post office this time of the year. <laughs> Hello, Gracie. Hello, Bill. Did you help Jimmy mail that package to his girl? Oh, yes. He got it off all right. See, that Jimmy's a cute kid. He was so worried because he didn't know what to give his girl for Christmas. Well, what did he finally give her? Well, I don't know yet. He mailed her 250 box tops and told her to send in for what she wants. <laughs> well, George gave me a beautiful bracelet for Christmas. Well, Gracie, Christmas isn't until next week. Well, I won't tell him he gave it to me until next week. Oh. Where is he now? Right over there in line. He's the one holding the bundle with the flannel pack. Boy, he looks all in. If the line wasn't so close together, he'd fall down. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Gracie. Oh, dear, I've got to find that superintendent. Oh, I've got an idea. George, come here. Gracie, I'm second in line. But I must see you before you get to the window. Well, what is it? When you get to the window, ask the man where the superintendent's office is. Is that what you called me out of the line for? Yes. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, mister, but I was standing in front of you. Get back at the end of the line. Well, I was standing right here. Get back at the end of the line. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Yes, get back. <laughs> come on, come on. This bundle is so heavy, it should be holding me. Well, here I am at the end of the line again. Oh, well, now, don't worry. I'll find that superintendent. I'll tell him a thing or two. Oh, pardon me. Oh. I'm terribly sorry. I spoke your bundles again. Oh, that's all right. I shouldn't be mailing all these gifts. My relatives hate me anyway. <laughs> Oh, this must be a swindle. There's a big crowd here. Oh, would you let me in, please? Just for a second. Uh, mister, are you the superintendent? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I'm busy selling defense stamps. Selling them? Selling them? Well, you ought to be buying them. Everybody ought to be buying them. Lady, you don't well, understand. You should be I... ashamed of yourself selling them. Don't you know how important defense stamps are in defense bonds? But, madam, I... Well, every dime, every dollar counts. The government's got to have money. But are you buying stamps? Are you buying bonds? No, you're selling them. But, madam, I... Oh, I buy stamps. I buy bonds. My friends all buy them. Everybody is buying them. But are you? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, well, good. <laughs> oh. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Now, let me see. Oh, pardon me, madam, but do you know where the superintendent's office is? I'm afraid not. I'm a stranger here. Oh, really? Where are you from? I'm from Waterbury. Mine? Were you born there? Yes. Well, that's very interesting. Were you ever born in San Francisco? <laughs> How could I be born in San Francisco? Well, it's easy. I was. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss, but I must be off. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> Casey, is George still in line? Uh-huh, right there. He is? Oh, gee, I better help him. George, George, I better hold that package for you before I have to hold you, too. Thanks, Bill, but I'm next in line. Well, here, give it to me and you stay in line. Thanks. Yes, sir, you're next. I'd like to mail this package. What package? This uh, Phil, Phil, let's have that package. Just a minute, George. I'm busy talking to this lady. Well, stop talking and bring me that package, Phil. Stop talking. I'm telling her about Swan. How Swan is the first really new white floating zoo. 
Eight ways better than all style floating soap. If you haven't got a package, will you step out of line? Bill, bring me that package. You see, but, but George, <laughs> George, I still got to tell her that Swan is pure and gentle, as mild as the finest imported Castile soap. Perfect for bathing the baby. Easy on your hands when you wash the dishes. She knows that. Bring me that package. You see, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Swan is really a twin bar. You can break Swan in two and use one half in the kitchen and one half in the bathroom. Come on, step out of line, please. Next. Give me that package. I'm going to break you in two. Now I'm out of the line again. Oh. All right, here you are. Shucks. Didn't even get a chance to tell her that Swan comes in a green wrapper with a white swan on the back. That's too bad. Well, don't worry, George. I'll get your place back to you. Just let me talk to this fella. Uh, oh, uh, hello, handsome. You mean me? <laughs> oh, yes. My, that's a pretty suit you have on. Oh, gosh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> and your hair is so nice and curly. Oh, shucks. In fact, I think you're awfully cute. Oh, gee, thanks. But if you think your husband's getting back in this line, you're nuts. <laughs> But look here, mister, this was my place. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Please, get back. <laughs> well, this is fine. There's a place for everything, and here I am again. Well, now, George, you just stay right here. I'll find that superintendent if I have to do it myself. Wait, lady. You don't have to bump into me again. I'll save you the trouble. for beating you to it. Oh, well, it's really my fault. I should have bumped into you sooner. <laughs> Say, uh, mister, do you know where the superintendent is? Right there, the man in the light suit. Oh, thank you. George! George! Grace. I found the superintendent. Gracie, Gracie! Uh, I'll be right there. Gracie, come back here. This thing is driving me crazy. I just can't... George, wait. are you still in the same spot? Yeah, Paul. Well, I'll see you later, kid. i got to buy some stamps. But, Paul, you just bought $20 worth. I know, but when I started licking them, they tasted awful. So I put some orange marmalade on them. <laughs> oh, fine. Then they tasted so good that the... Well, I gotta go buy some more stamps. So <laughs> Hope he doesn't get his tongue caught in the canceling machine. <laughs> John, come here. I'm fourth in line, not me. But this is a superintendent. Yes, come here, Mr. Burns. Yes, sir. What's this about you getting me fired and suing the post office for damages? <laughs> I, I never said that. And not only that, my husband will have you transferred to Glendale. Gracie, please. We'll see about that. Now, what's your complaint? I've got no complaint. I'd just like to mail this package. Then why aren't you in line? <laughs> I was in line. You just called me. I didn't call you. You called me. Now get back to the end of the line. The end of the line? Yeah, get back. 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 Oh, come on, Gracie. Come on! <laughs> You're not going to get away with that. Well, this is fine. I'm at the end of the line again. Who does that superintendent think he is? I'm going to find the postmaster general. Postmaster General, he's in Washington. He is? Well, then you wait right here. I'll be right back. Right here, you come back here? Oh,
address here back home after finally mailing the package. It cost $11 and 15 years off George's life. Senor Lee would get back with that liniment. Can't move my arms. Gracie, instead of just standing there, why don't you rub my muscles? Oh, George, I'm looking for them. <laughs> They're right here. Oh, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Quick, get my handkerchief out of my pocket. Well, well you're sitting on it. Well, well, help me. Don't just stand there. Well, don't worry. I'll uh, think of something. Uh, oh, I thought of something. What? God bless you. <laughs> Well, it's about time you got back. <laughs> Senor Lee, did you get the liniment? Si, sí, senor. Here you are. Well, I'd better run upstairs and get some flannels wrapped around your arm. Senor Lee, where's the change for my $10? Here it is, 30 cents. 30 cents? Liniment only cost a quarter. Si, sí, senor. Even I was surprised by the sales tax. <laughs> Do you expect me to believe that sales tax, uh, the sales tax was $9.45? I would prefer it. <laughs> well, I don't believe it. Where's that money? Uh, well, uh, I tell you the truth, Senor Burns. Outside, I met a poor old man. He looked so hungry, I gave him the money. I say, here, old man, for Christmas, buy something nice for your son. With tears in his eyes, he said, thank you, Carlos. Carlos? Uh, how did he know your name? My father shouldn't know my name. <laughs> go on, go on, get out of here. Sí, como no, get out of here, get out of here. Es el único que dicen aquí. Gracie, Gracie, come on down here. All right, get away from the bathroom. Here I come, please. Look, I landed on my feet. Well, for a minute. <laughs> There's any liniment left over. I'll let you have some. Oh, look. Here comes Ethel Wilcox up the front steps. You mean that absent-minded woman from across the street? Uh, uh, here she is. Oh, hello, Sandra. Sandra? Uh, uh, my name is Gracie. Oh, yeah, I must remember that. Oh, my, your house looks pretty, Gracie. What a lovely old hat rack. Have you had it very long? Well, I've been married to him for 15 years. <laughs> I brought over a present for you, Gracie. Oh, now, where'd I put that thing? Well, it's in your hand. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. Well, here you are. And a merry... Um... Merry... Christmas. Oh, yeah, I, I must, must remember, remember that. that. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Ethel. And I sent you a present today. I sent you some rocks for your rock god. Oh, thanks. Rocks? Do you mean to say that I stood in the post office for hours with 40 pounds of rocks for somebody that lives across the street? <laughs> Why couldn't I take them over myself? That's the postman's job. That's what he gets paid for. Why should I let you carry a heavy package like that? 